after much um, sitting and thinking and rearranging of belts, I finally came up with a solution that works. We just had to buy a slightly shorter belt to make it happen. What I did is we had this smaller idler wheel from something else in the bearing bucket. Uh, and so I put that on the end of the tensioner here. And then on the pivot point of the tensioner, I just drilled and tapped a hole and bolted the original idler from here onto there. And that allows the belt to go up and over the tensioner with plenty of room to clear it. And we've got good wrap on the crank pulley, which is like the most important because it drives everything else. Plenty of wrap on the power steering pump, more than enough on the alternator. The only one that's a little minimal is the water pump, but it doesn't have as much resistance as the other ones. So that should work. I took the shroud and the fan off because unfortunately they do not fit on the back side, but they will fit, well, the fan anyway, will fit on the front. So it'll, we'll just wire it the other way so it's a pusher fan instead of a pull fan. What I'm gonna have to do is cut and redo these in uh, inlet and outlet ports. fit a uh, four row Honda Civic racing radiator into a 2J lawnmower tractor because, you know, that's, that's life advice that everyone needs. You know, that's, that we're contributing to the world one, uh, one project at a time. But it fits, it fits perfectly. That is so satisfying. And uh, yeah, there's plenty of space in here for the fan. We still have the heater core circuit of the cooling, and that has a pipe that goes back here that's currently detached, and then the other port is right here. So initially I was gonna make a block off plate here and then just plug this, but then I realized I could also just bolt the thing back up and put a piece of hose so it just loops around and then there's coolant flowing wherever it wants to be flowing. If we do need more cooling capacity later on, we could add a heater core <laughs> right here uh, just a small radiator somewhere in this space, then we would already have coolant going to it. Obviously it's less flow, but you know, it all adds up. So we're starting another channel called Grind Hard Shorts, where we're gonna post little 30 second clips of, you know, updates throughout the week, uh, future build ideas, and you know, little jumps and sends and rallies and you know, little short clips that don't make sense anywhere else. So yeah, Grind Hard Shorts, go subscribe, link is below. Wired that all up, ran it back through here, and I hooked it up so that uh, when you turn the key on, oh, also we've got the Elite 2500 plugged in now. If you turn the ignition on, PCU powers up, it runs the fuel pump for a few seconds, and then uh, you can turn the fan on. So, all good things. And I wired that to a switch that, you know, fits in one of those spots on the dash here, so we've got all of our, you know, switches and stuff looking old and tractory. Also, I realized we absolutely need to wire up these two lights as our only indicators on the whole dash. Uh, eventually we'll have to wire up, up to the ECU and program it to turn these lights on if the oil pressure goes low or if it gets hot. We tried fitting a single battery in here, uh, but one big enough to have the cranking amps wasn't small enough to fit in the space. So we got two of these, which are a power sports battery, like, you know, for an ATV or, or motorcycle or something. And they're each 325 cranking amps, so Combined, that's 650, which is more than stock for this engine. I made all these little bungs for the intake manifold so we can plug all the holes and have our map sensor. And uh, we've got our resident closest thing to an expert on tuning, Casey. The tractor guy? Yeah, yeah exactly. Is a tractor. Yeah, it's, it's appropriate. So, um, yeah, time to program it and see if we can get it to start. Step one, plug in the USB. Just 
trying to figure out our throttle position sensor situation. We've got an electric throttle and something is not adding up here. The uh, um, There's essentially two parts in the sensor that uh, make it kind of a fail safe. So we'll have a high voltage on one half and low on the other half. And as you step on the throttle, it'll change that. And uh, currently we can't get any response out of it. Both of them are reading the same. And as we move the throttle, Pedal, it's not actually doing anything so we think we've got a little wiring problem we're thinking at the pedal just trying to get that figured out right now so I probably wired it wrong that's the short answer well we did get the uh, throttle pedal right so a couple of the wires were in incorrect order so we were able to figure that out and get it all pinned in right so we're getting activity on the computer like we're supposed to be seeing now we're trying to get the throttle position sensor in the throttle body right uh, we're getting again similar problem we move the throttle plate and there's no voltage change in it so we're thinking maybe something's not quite right here so you know little problems that take a lot of time <laughs> yep i got all the fuel lines hooked up to that for testing that so uh i've got the fuel filter here um, we've got basically all of our fuel components right next to the batteries, so if anything shorts out, we'll just go up into a fiery inferno of death, which is fun. Yeah, so fuel lines run, we've got the return line, the pickup line, there's no fuel in the tank yet, because I don't want it to be spewing all over the place, but once I hear no air hisses, we'll put fuel in there and give it a shot. Well, we finally got the, uh throttle body to work, the uh, throttle position sensor and everything figured out there, and uh, we just need to calibrate this thing, so yeah, just a push of a button away. So cool. <laughs> no, no! <laughs> Full throttle. <laughs> I don't know why, but drive-by-wire throttle is just so much cooler than, you know, a cable throttle. Because you can computer it? Yup. Look, I'm driving with my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> vroom! Vroom! Well, that must mean we're getting close. We're very close. I just wanted to do this like before we're too close because if we get too excited, we could easily forget. One of the last things is the exhaust. Obviously, I'm not gonna take the time to build a whole exhaust before we do a test start, but I don't want the exhaust coming out of here to just melt the throttle pedal. So, solution. This is a good sign. This is a good sign. We're looking for earmuffs. That's that's a sign that we expect it to start because we expect it to be extraordinarily loud. Ignition on. Neutral. Check. drag racer of a 2J. <laughs> <laughs> also, that is a lot of smoke. That is a ton of smoke. Something's a bit off yet. But, uh, <laughs> hey, it kind of runs. It runs. <laughs> it's not good, but it runs. <laughs>
Well, I was just asking Casey if, uh, when we met in college and started playing pool together at the dorms, if, uh, he ever anticipated that we'd be working on a standalone ECU on a 2JZ in a lawn tractor. <laughs> Never crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it had crossed your mind, that would be pretty bizarre. Yeah. Well, uh, after much frustration and many weird problems, it runs! There's still a ton of tuning to be done, um, and obviously eventually we'll have to get it actually on a dyno and properly tuned, but um, a lot of the maps and stuff we messed up because we were, you know, Casey was changing fuel maps and stuff, trying to get it to run before we figured out the cam sensor bolt problem. So uh, Casey was just here for a few minutes yesterday when we figured out the problem and got it running, so he just got it just barely back to, you know, idling and revving a little bit. So. Um, but that's okay because we can't drive it right now anyway because there's no clutch and no brakes. So we'll work on those. We'll get Casey back up here for another just basic tuning uh, session. Obviously, we haven't turned on a lot of features we just turned off so that we could get it running basically. Like the uh, wideband O2 sensor is all just turned off right now because um, obviously you don't need that for it to run. You just need it for it to be, you know, tunable and efficient. So anyway. Uh, we'll get all of that stuff sorted, get a brake pedal and clutch pedal and a seat, and, uh, then, um, oh, and an air filter. <laughs> Might be important. And then we'll actually take it for its first rip. It runs, and huge, huge thanks to Haltech, obviously. It would not be running without them. Also, enormous thanks to Golby's Parts for the intake and the cam sensor kit and all the other parts that we got from them. And, uh, of course, thanks to our friend Casey for helping us do the uh, tuning part of it. So, it's an exciting time.